So the challenges that are most commonly faced in plastics manufacturing are the things we're trying to address with these types of solutions. Uh, Connor Smart Services recognizes that all factories have cost pressures, right? Cost pressures from uh, machine downtime, unplanned machine downtime, which are equipment failures in particular. Uh, the complexity of the controls is yet another uh, challenge within the, the, the plastics industry. As I said before, you have a lot of different machines made from many different manufacturers, and, and in some cases, you have uh, machines c coming from the same manufacturer, and they all have a look and feel that are uh, just dissimilar enough that it makes it challenging to, to keep up with. Uh, there's a shortage of skilled workers as well. So you get somebody trained and they either get promoted or they move on to some other type of industry. Uh, so that's a challenge as well is uh, finding and retaining uh, skilled workers. Uh, another uh, challenge, of course, is process variation, right? So we talked a little bit about this briefly when I was talking about the evolution of 4.0 and where it's headed, is you have process variations that are uh, challenges to your to your factory, and you're operating more in a reactive uh, moment now under sort of the industry 3.0 rules where you're just collecting data and then going through the data yourself trying to find out <clears throat> where problems might be. And process variations, of course, would be one of those types of things. But again, that's a reactive type uh, problem, and 4.0 is meant to address it and, and be more uh, proactive to help you out to increase your efficiencies and decrease your downtime. So the use of digital technology in these types of uh, roles is, you know, there's, there's key goals here. You want to uh, work with smarter machines, right? You have to have machines that have CPUs in them so you can collect the data out of them. Uh, although there are solutions to add sensors to machines that don't necessarily have a computer on them. Uh, you want to be able to, uh, in this role, uh, that we're trying to meet is uh, monitor the health of the machines, right? So that we're putting the data in an easily uh, accessible format, easy to read, uh, stored, so that you can go back if you want to, and then also use it uh, for real-time uh, predictive uh, alerts and, and uh, threshold type settings. Um, you also want to be able to visualize the machine and the data in, a, in an easy, friendly way. So that it doesn't take an IT person or somebody with a, uh, a lot of experience with analyzing uh, big pieces of information. Uh, it needs to be user-friendly. So Connor's role in this solution is to make that easier to visualize. Additionally, we, we create uh, condition-based alarms that you can set. So we have uh, some conditions are built into the machine and they would be communicated to you. Uh, others, you can uh, create alerts of your own, right? Uh, where it might go, who, who might be notified. Uh, you may want to tighten up a particular uh, condition uh, and produce an alarm on that. And then lastly, uh, Connor's role in meeting these challenges is, is remote monitoring, right? Connectivity uh, to the machines uh, from anywhere in the world is really sort of the goal, right? You want to be able to uh, use your expert. Maybe you've got more than one factory and you've got one particular person that is an expert at one type of machine. Uh, this person might be, uh, for instance, an expert in dryers or maybe an expert in uh, uh, thermalators or, or blending or something like this. Um, if you have connectivity that anybody can get to any machine, then your expert can be anywhere, right? Uh, anywhere he has uh, access to the 4.0 solution, he can get in and, and uh, help out an operator or help out a maintenance person or uh, help analyze data.